We are the two mics. This is the warm up, and it's time to say a very, very good Sunday morning to Mr. Mike Apoki, a parry, the victim of the beef. Very You're good morning of to you. The beef. Very good morning to you, Mike. Yes. And uh, of course, it's like water off a duck's back. Indeed. I just find his, ext- you know, his behaviour quite extraordinary. Yeah. Um, the job of what we do here on Talksport yes. is to express opinions. That's right. That's what we are. We're an opinion-based. And occasionally, um, we ask station. for other people's opinions. An opinion-based news and sports station. Yeah. Right. We ask for other people's opinions. We take their opinions. Opinions, debate their opinions. Yep. That's what it's all about. Well, so, we did, incidentally, have two people ring us yesterday, amongst yes. many who came to air, yes. uh, to defend the beef, to yep. say they thought he was an inspiration to young people. Exactly. A lot of the people who are having a go at us and who yes. are claiming that we should be fired uh, or uh, walked out the door suspended, yes. I don't think any of them actually heard the show. They didn't hear the I show. I was defending him. I said he was an inspiration. Yep. Uh, in fact, Rupert Bell defended him, said he was an inspiration, yes. a great guy, and that you should stop giving him a hard time. Yep. You know, it was, it was a conversation. You yep. know, the idea that he suddenly takes exception to something he's never he, heard exactly. is amazing. He took exception to something he heard. He took exception to a poll that said he's an inspiration to yes, young people. That's right. Now, that could only come about declaring him an inspiration to young people because I put forward the opinion yes. that I think that maybe he plays up a little too much to yeah. the clownish side of his personality. Indeed. He has got a clownish side to his personality. He is a vivacious yeah. and eccentric man. Yeah. He, he looks... Apparently uh, very thin-skinned, though, as well. Very thin he, he looks extraordinary with his big bushy beard. Yep. He's got a very engaging smile and, and, and a great set of white teeth. He, he, he looks like he's a fun guy. Yeah. And therefore, I'm entitled to express the opinion yeah. that is that side of the beef's personality yeah. overtaking the professional golfer side, sure. particularly in the middle of the most important golf competition in the world, the Open? He did a very good round of golf yesterday. He did. Uh, and he's still in contention. At one point Absolutely. last night when he was in the midst of tweeting us yes. madly for four hours, yes. I said, wouldn't you be better off actually just uh, practising instead said, of sitting uh, in the bar? or wherever you're sitting, I, I, uh, having a war of words with us. I did as well. I said, you know, you've got a huge amount of stroke play. Don't let this get you off your stroke, you know. I mean, yeah, exactly. get into it and, yeah. and, and, and well, don't let your head... off at 12.35. We'll talk to the Rupert Bell yeah. uh, in a little while to find out what the temperature is up there, yeah. how things are looking, yeah. uh, whether, in fact, uh, whether in fact he's, uh, he's seen uh, the beef this morning, yes. uh, whether the beef is speaking to him. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll catch up with Rupert in a, in a, in a moment we, or two. We will. Can I just say that when you start tweeting out and calling people... You know, horrible name. A horrible word, yes. A very, very horrible word, yes. which you wouldn't repeat on uh, Talk Sport because no. we're a, a family show in a family station. Absolutely. For no apparent reason other than somebody's told you something when you've yeah. gone off the golf course. Yeah. I think you're in the wrong. Yes. However, I forgive you. Yes. And, and it does not uh, You're a very forgiving me. person. I'm a very forgiving person. Yeah. I Your think mother's a bit horrified, though. My mother was absolutely horrified that yeah. uh, that somebody who's in the public eye should call her son that. I yes. mean, very hurt and, 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 and very upset. Yes. Uh, also, I think when you start saying, I'm coming after you, that has very sinister connotations. It does indeed, yes. And for a professional sportsman to threaten me like that, I'm coming after you, is something which, you know, I wouldn't yeah. go around saying to people well, in print, to be honest, because I think it can be, be careful. misconstrued. Yes, it can. It can be misconstrued. Absolutely. I'm going slightly mad. I'm going slightly mad. It finally happened, happened. Finally happened. Finally happened. I'm slightly mad. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. Don't forget, of course, you can tweet us at the two mics. Yes. We had quite a Twitter uh, uh, avalanche, you'd have to say, from well, last night. Can and I, it's still going on this morning as well. Can I just say, it was rather distracting yeah. because last night we were at a great event. We okay? were at a great event. I just want to remind people, last night we were at the Well House Inn yes. uh, down in Surrey. Yes. Our hosts were Donna and uh, Greta. Greta, that's right, yeah. Uh, behind the bar, who absolutely laid out a fantastic um, night's racing. You know, yes. Uh, not real racing, it's, uh, what's it called, electronic racing. And Electronic sort electronic of horse racing, screen, which but it was, is pre-recorded it was, and all that, yeah, but people yeah. basically get into the spirit of That's it, right, backing yeah. numbered yeah. horses, and, That's uh, right. and, and we raised 2,000 quid, right? Well, it was great fun, honestly, because uh, we went along and we decided to uh, sponsor the event through our... Um, Porky Parry snacks. Uh, yes. Sorry, Porky Parry scratching. By the way, do you know what happened? I woke up yes. in the middle of the night mm-hmm. uh, in the Premier yeah. Inn, uh, in yeah. finally finally appointed room, yeah. and I was starving, right? Because I'd only had something to eat sort of around about yeah. five o'clock. Don't uh, tell me. The only there, thing right? on hand was a packet of I Porky scratchings. Pa- I found two packets of Porky scratchings, <laughs> right? I ate them, and it was delicious. Yeah. 
<laughs> I have to tell you, they were brilliant. Yeah, they they're are. really good. They are. Everybody I've spoken to says they're the best they've ever tasted. They were really good. And um, and funny enough, I got a message this morning from the guy <laughs> saying that the thousand outlets in Essex have right. now suddenly taken on Porky Fantastic. Barry Scratching. Right. So if you're in Essex, you're lucky. But no, seriously, uh, this is not a cheap plug for anything like that. We raised £2,000 for children with cancer. It was a wonderful night. Thank you to everybody who got involved. Richard Lewis, my brother-in-law, was one of the main organisers and he put on a great, great night. Uh, everybody had a good time. We'll do one of those again uh, very soon. Yes, we should. And, yep. and I'm sure the charity will be very grateful. And we met yep. some great people as well who came along to meet us. Yes, indeed. Um, and uh, so thank you to all of them, some of whom took pictures, some of which uh, we yep. will be putting out uh, over the course of the next couple of days. But yeah, it was a, it was a tremendous night. But as you say, mm. um, it was quite distracting because this, you know, the Twitter was, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. Like 100 <laughs> tweets a minute coming in with various people signing with us, yes. various people signing with him. The thing that yes. I found the most interesting mm. was that most people who were signing with Beef hadn't heard the show. No. And mo- most of them do not follow us. No. Uh, they were telling us about how disgraceful it was to run a yeah. poll. I mean, the idea yeah. that you can't run a poll yes. and ask people's opinion about something yes. because it's it somehow uh, is, is disrespectful to the person yeah. it's is a nonsense. And I, Complete and, nonsense. And look, I hold no grudges against B for calling me what he did. No. It, was, uh, it was a horrible word to use, but that's that, you know, the heat of the moment and all that. I haven't got a problem. But do realise that when you go onto Twitter and you call somebody a horrible name, yeah. what you're doing is you're opening the floodgates to the nasty, small-minded individuals who always want to have a go at you, yes. who then pile in behind because they think that they're doing you a favour yeah. and call you even worse horrible names, you know? Yes. So there was a lot of that last night, which uh, I had to deal with. Um, but, you know, that's life. We get on with it and uh, it's another day. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And so we're going to move on. Uh, we hope he does better today yes, uh, of course uh, we do. even than he did yesterday. Yes. And, I mean, if he concentrates more on his golf and less on his image, Mm. and less about protecting uh, what people say about him and gets a bit of a thicker skin, I think he'll do well, well in life. Well, he'll do well anyway. He's a very successful man, by the way. Anybody who thinks I don't respect beef is, is crazy. This man is a multi-millionaire. He's one of the top probably ten golfers in the world. Uh, we'll find out a bit later on where he, where he, he sits in the open, yeah. obviously. Uh, who has created an image which has done him nothing but good. Mm. And we merely examined that image yesterday and then, boom, you know, the, the bonfire was satellite by yes. uh, a few harsh words. But uh, I wish him the very best today and I wish him the very best in anything he does. I am uh, always behind anything British. If it's a British team in Europe, I want them to win. I don't care who they are. If it's a British golfer here or abroad, I want them to win. That includes the beef. Best of luck for the rest of your career. Indeed, absolutely Mm. right. Now, we've got a lot of football to talk about because uh, Chelsea are moving on into Singapore uh, for their next little leg of their pre-season tour. They're playing Bayern Munich on uh, July the 25th, playing uh, Inter Milan on the 29th. Uh, We'll be talking to Mike McGrath, uh, who's just landed in Singapore very, very shortly as well. Don't forget also, uh, coming up later is a Porky Sermon. The Porky Sermon. So in, for anyone indeed. who feels in any way guilty about what they yep. did last night, yep. particularly if they were tweeting horrible things, yes. you know, a bit of spiritual guidance will probably help them along the way. Yes, that's right, indeed. Mm. The, the football story which caught my eye this morning, and I think it, it, it happened late last night, Manchester City have now spent £130 million, £133 million pounds yeah. on three fullbacks right. in nine days. And my question to you when you told me that earlier yeah. was, are any of them actually any good, though, as fullbacks? Well, we know about Carl Walker, yeah, we know about who's Carl very Walker. good at going forward. Uh, we know Pep Guardiola doesn't particularly yeah. value um, defensive players, does he? I mean, he expects all players that he's got to be attacking, to be attacking players, players. Including the goalkeeper. Including, yeah, including yeah. the goalkeeper, and that hasn't worked out terribly well for him. However... Uh, and they lost to Manchester United, didn't they, in Houston yes. the other night? Yes. And United actually looked rather good. Yeah, they did, yeah. So, I mean, who are the others that, you, that they bought then? Well, the, the two they've bought since they bought Kyle Walker are Madrid's, uh, Real Madrid's uh, Danilo yeah. and Benjamin Mendy from uh, Monaco. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they've each cost, uh, let me see, £27 million for Danilo. Mm. So, he must be coming towards the end of his career, I suppose. That's why Real Madrid will let him go and, uh, and why he's only half the price of Kyle Walker. Right. And uh, £52 million for um, Mendy. Yes. From... I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, of course, Chelsea have got themselves a Real Madrid player. There's yeah. not an awful lot of Real Madrid rejects who actually do terribly well no. after they leave Real Madrid. No, I agree. Because Real Madrid don't let them go. I, I mean, look I, at Mesut Ozil, for example. Yeah, I totally agree. Who plays all right for Arsenal, but, I yeah. mean, you know, Arsenal fans are even mm. are even divided yes. about whether he's actually uh, a great player or not. That's right. Uh, the, the guy, um, the young lad from Monaco, who's cost uh, 50... Three, sorry, 52 million, yeah. uh, Benjamin Mendy. Apparently, it was the two games against Manchester City this season which mm. alerted Pep Guardiola to how good he was. Oh, really? And, yeah, I mean, that's the way football works, isn't it? You know, you get into a competitive game, you see who's causing your problems, and if you're Manchester City, you can go and buy them, uh, which is exactly what they've done. I feel a bit sorry for Monaco because they've got some of the world's best players, yeah. including Mbappe. Yeah. 
but they're going to lose them all in well, this uh, in this transfer window. Yeah. They're the sort of European version of Southampton. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they? yeah, that's right. Yeah, but they won the uh, league own last season, so I mean, you yeah, know, sure, they're, they're still doing pretty well. Sure, I just don't think the French league is strong enough to resist offers of the size of this. No, because it's not, uh, you know, it's not Spain, it's not Germany. Uh, no, obviously, it's not England. Mm. Yeah. No, we shall see. Yeah. Uh, lots more to come, of course. We're also going to be talking jousting coming up a little bit later on. We're speaking to a member. People actually do that. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Well, Victoria Pendleton has yeah. taken it up, hasn't yeah, she? she has. That's what alerted uh, us she's to a, it. She's a woman who has more or less been able to turn her hand to a great many sports since uh, leaving the world of cycling. I mean... Horse she, racing, jousting, what next? She didn't... She had never ridden a horse right. until they went into the project yeah. and they got into a ride in the Grand yeah. National. And then she rode at Cheltenham, didn't she? Uh, was it Cheltenham? I think Grand it was National? Cheltenham, yeah. Cheltenham, that's right. Sorry, che- yeah, Cheltenham Gold Cup. Yeah. It? Yeah. And one year to the day that she first stepped onto a horse, she was actually riding in a... In, the, in one of the world's most famous steeple tra- right. uh, f- most famous uh, races. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Yeah. But we'll be talking not to her, but to Jeremy Richardson, yes. uh, who's a member of the Knights of Royal England, yes. which is a jousting display team, yeah. uh, amongst many other things, of course. And uh, we will be keeping you updated, of course, on what is going on at Royal Birkdale. In, in jousting, in in jousting yeah. is, it, is it illegal to point your lance at your opponent's head? Uh, I don't know. I'm not because, a jouster. You see, that's what I'd do. I'd take his head off. Would you? Well, of course you would, because then you, you disable well, somebody. Well, I think you're allowed you to point your lance anywhere you like, but, I mean, in this form of jousting, yeah. I think it's not actually uh, the object of the sport to kill the other person. Well, I know it's not I the object to kill. You know, I'm supposed to just get points. I could never... You know when you used to watch uh, Robin Hood and Maid Marion and all that? I thought that must you be the most horrible that. way to die, to get a, a, a lance through your, your visa into your face. In, through your visa. all your teeth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or yeah. your MasterCard, even. Yeah. It's a sport. On DAB Digital Radio. Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The warm up with the two mics on Talk Sport. Talk Sport, we are the two mics coming up a little bit later on. We will be talking to a real knight, of course, the Knight of Royal England, uh, by the name of Jeremy Richardson, uh, right. who's part of a jousting display team. Yep. Uh, and you can ask him all those questions that you have about yes. whether or not you can uh, you know, for the head. stab somebody in the head. Yep. I'm not quite sure mm. if it's a kind of um, friendly type situation, mm. Uh, mm. i.e. you're not actually trying to kill someone, yeah. that you would want to do that. That's because right. it might be very, very difficult yeah, to do. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Speaking of damaging people in the head, I've mm. uh, got quite a funny tweet here from somebody reminding us that uh, this is not the first time you've got to run in with a golfer right. uh, he says is that beef coming with Lee Westwood says yeah. Milt uh, time to get to the hospitality tent ASAP yeah. they look well, like they're packing some heat yeah I've got a great relationship with Lee Westwood what happened was years ago uh, Lee Westwood did he not chase you round the course he, with a five iron he did yeah at uh, Royal of them St Anne's yes. because shortly before that I'd uh, expressed the view that to miss the Masters as he did uh-huh. for personal and private reasons right. and his was wife, he, well, was his wife a baby, a baby. Right? and uh, of course that's uh, you know his uh, totally uh, this is another disgraceful right uh, example of you giving an opinion. Uh, well, I gave an opinion. What I said was, I said, look, every man to his own. But all I said was, at the time, Michael Schumacher was, you know, just the greatest racing driver yeah. ever been born mm. and ruthlessly determined to win every race. I said, no, I said, uh, Lee Westwood's got perfect right to do it. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's a great golfer. He's going to be, a, you know, a champion for years to come. I said, but it's the sort of thing that Michael Schumacher wouldn't even dream of doing. Mm. I said, it's a different perspective on sport. Yes. And that was taken to... to uh, you know, to mean that I was criticising Lee Westwood, which right. I wasn't. Weren't you? I just said it was horses for courses. Yes. You know, Michael Schumacher probably wouldn't have done Lee Westwood wanted to do. Mm. Showed his, uh, his his care and concern as a husband and a father. You yes. Know? Uh, but unfortunately, it got misinterpreted again by people. And uh, yes, I did have to hit the uh, the long grass yes. and die very quickly when Indeed. he was about. To keep yourself I mean, out of the way. I was literally hiding in the long grass. Yes, yeah. absolutely right. Mm. Uh, here's one from, uh, where are we? Uh, I can't find it now. Mm. Oh, yeah, from Paul. He says, Porky, please do some differential geometry one week in your quiz. Yeah. Uh, just to wind the topics. He said he'd quite like to have a maths quiz of some kind. A maths quiz? I don't mind that. Really? I don't mind that, yeah. Maths quizzes are difficult to organise, aren't they? Because yes. you'd need to have the ability to you know, work things out on bits of paper and, yeah, all, that and all that kind of stuff yeah and, and how many i mean how many sort of calculus type questions can you ask well exactly the square root of you mm. know and all that kind of stuff yeah. you know what i mean well, we could do that if you wish but, but i think uh, it's rather limited i think it's rather limited as well we now, may have to give it some thought for this week though of course we'll the, give uh, some thought quiz. we'll give some thought right. don't worry okay. now i have some bad news for you do you um because you are a dedicated father to your children Indeed. you like to get up and down to sussex as regularly as you can i do that means you're going to suffer from dementia i'm afraid dementia yeah Why? Um, well i'm going to suffer from that anyway 
anyway, because my father had it. Oh, and more than likely, oh, really? I will indeed. What do you mean, oh, really? Oh, well, when's that going to come on, then? When's the onset of that? Well, I mean, he started to get, I would say, a slightly absent-minded. Yeah. Uh, and he's shown the first signs of what I would say early onset yeah. Alzheimer's, probably in his kind of late 60s, I'd oh, say. OK, all right, well... So I've got about another 15 years. Well, fingers crossed, it will never happen, because yeah. it's a terrible affliction. Well, it is, but, but I mean, I wonder whether um, whether it's a hereditary scenario. Well, I think it's sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Yeah. But it says here, uh, I've been studying one of my journals this morning, driving sends your brain into reverse. Uh-huh. Um, scientists have found out that regularly spending more than two hours a day behind the wheel yes. can reduce your IQ. Really? Significantly. That wouldn't surprise me, but I very rarely spend more than two hours. Well, you might drive up and drive down on a weekend or something, right? Yeah. So it says the researchers who studied how sedentary behaviour affects brain power, so we're talking about couch potatoes really here, found it fell faster in middle-aged Britons who drove long distances every day. Uh It is suggested that people who want to protect their brains against the ravage of ageing should minimise their time on the road Mm. and find activities that are more mentally stimulating, such as socialising. Yeah, but the problem is... So it says don't drive home, go to the pub, that's basically... Yeah, but you can't basically just not go places, can you? I mean, that's the problem. I mean, one of the reasons I got a car in the first place, because for a long time, yeah. just don't, don't forget, I never had a car. You know, we had a car that yes. was, was used in Sussex, but I never actually drove it very right. much in London. That's right. Because I came up and down the train. That's right. The train service became so unreliable. Mm. Uh, and also the cab service I used to use to come into work yes. from London yes. became so unreliable that I yes. just thought, the hell with this. That's right. I'm going to get a car. That's and right. now that I've got a car, it is a kind of, you become a slave to it in a way. Yeah. Because I now use the car far more obviously than I would yes. um, if I if I you know if I didn't actually own yeah. one I wouldn't rent one yeah, that exactly. often I would you know you get used to using public transport of course yeah now Kishan Bakrania who is a medical epidemiologist what uh, uh, epidemiologist yes uh, yeah what's that what do you think a medical epidemiologist is? I don't know is? what an epidemiologist is. I'm well, just it's, asking it's you. A, it's a, you don't know, do you? It, yes, I do. It's what a, is it? It's a, a specialist doctor who deals with epidemiology. <laughs> Sorry, it's your problem. Okay, go on. Right, okay. That's fine. I'll yeah. look it up. Yeah, and uh, he says, we know that regularly driving for more than two or three hours a day is bad for your heart. Right. No, I didn't know that. Um, it, it well, says, maybe that's how you got the heart problem in the first place. Maybe, I did, yeah. Uh, it says, but this research suggests it's also bad for your brain. Right. And perhaps because your mind is less active in those hours. Uh, now, you see, I find that interesting because I find driving a car is something I have to concentrate on a great deal, uh-huh. particularly at night. Um, you know, because I I think that cars go too fast these days. They're too big for the roads that we now drive on. But also, as we pointed out, because we came yeah. in together, we, we, should, yeah. we should we should tell people this, mm. you see, because mm. it's quite an unusual thing yes. for us to come to work together. That's right. Uh, normally that would only happen if we were out doing a show, because That's right. we were effectively doing an event last night. That's right. We drove in together. And you do have to concentrate driving through London now, mm. yeah. not so much because of, of the other drivers who yeah. drive incredibly slowly, yeah. but because of all the different, um, you know, junctions, the cycle superhighways, you know, the blue... Blue bits traffic of strips, lights. the traffic lights which show green, but it's not for you. No, nope. it's for a bike, and That's you know right. you have to be really alert. All Going the time. into bus lanes at twenty-four hours a day, some of them are protected against cars. The traffic lights, the um, you know that because I drive, we both drive home sometimes in the, the early hours of the morning. Yeah. A a pedestrian crossing with traffic lights activates itself to go to red Mm. about every, I don't know, 15 minutes or something, whether there's anybody pressing the button or not. No, I know. Just to stop you. Where was I the other day? I was somewhere the other day, and there was a series of traffic lights, one after the other, about 100 yards apart, uh, each of them, and they changed for less than 30 seconds. I kid you not. And then changed back. And then changed back again. And I was, you know, you end up starting to talk to yourself. You do start talking to yourself. Would it be nice if these traffic lights actually stayed green for at least 30 seconds? I'm, that would be a help. I'm sitting there at 2.30 in the morning, yeah. and it's a, one of these pedestrian crossings with a button, right? Yeah. And it's gone red. Right. And I'm looking up and down the pavement on each side. Yeah. There are no pedestrians. Right. So why is a pedestrian crossing right. gone red? Right. Why do they set them to go red every 10 minutes? Well, there's, it's there's one at Blackheath, right, which, yeah. which is a very busy road coming in from the A2 yeah. into central London. Yeah. And there's a traffic light, which, which, which is necessary because people yeah. do cross quite mm. a lot. But when there's a lot of pedestrians around, mm. it, it, every time somebody presses it, it goes red immediately. Yeah. So it actually goes red about every, I would say... Minutes, yes. While there's people trying to cross the road, and at Russia, it's a permanent yeah, barrier to yeah, traffic. Exactly. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. Now I've got a definition of epidemiology for you. Yes. It is the study and analysis of the patterns, causes, and effects of health and disease conditions in defined populations. Well, there you go. It is the cornerstone of public health mm. and shapes policy decisions and evidence-based practice by identifying risk factors for disease and targets for preventative healthcare. Well, he's so he's one of these nanny state type doctors, which is going to be where they go. Oh, Hang on, let's... I think that's very unfair. No, it isn't. It's because... a highly qualified 
qualified doctor no, no, no. who's trying to no, prevent that's illness. That's what I'm saying. These preventative types, right? Yeah. These are the people who say, you know, don't drink too much because you'll become a drain on the state. Well, you will. Don't smoke in case you become a drain on the NHS. Well, you do. Yeah, but you pay an awful lot of tax, which prevents people from actually not being able to access the health in the first place. God, and you think I'm elitist? When you're I'm saying, well, elitist. I pay so much tax, I can, you know... No, have, I'm not saying that. I'll have the National Health Service no. at my beck and call no, that's not what I'm to saying. deal with my 40-year-long smoking no. problem, my as, lifelong listen, addiction to drink. Listen, as you have already established, mm. you have used mm. up not only your own uh, uh, share yeah. of the NHS budget, yeah. but you've used up about Birmingham's share of the NHS budget well, because of all harsh. the ill health you've suffered over the years. Well, you've been uh, in hospital more times no. than people have had hot dinners. No. You have wasted more of the NHS budget than anybody I know. How can it so be don't a... start having a go at me. Excuse me. How, this is a, you know, that, that's a very hurtful thing to say. Why? You think it's a waste to have kept me alive? Well, I'm not saying it's a waste. I'm mm. saying you've used more resources than anybody I know. You've used about yes. the same amount of resources yes. that a small town has, uh, would, would normally use. But I've probably paid more tax than a small town. I doubt it. Tax, you know, because uh, it. because I've been in full employment all my life. Well, you say that, but yeah. I mean, who knows how much of it do you declare? All of it. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, really? Uh, please do not go down that road. No. I have a team of accountants. Team. Who, yes. Who who are absolutely yeah. instructed. We must not. I mean, I do things like you know, I declare interest on accounts, uh-huh. which these days with interest rates where they are. Pay you like seven pounds a year or really? something like that. Yeah, I declare all of that. Well, you have to declare it. Yeah, that's exactly. That's, that's the do. law. Yeah, but some well, people you can't get away with it. Some people would, you know, just say, "Well, it's only seven pounds. So what's the point in declaring?" No, no, it? no. You have to declare every single bit and of interest you get. I do. You don't even know where half your bank accounts are. Well, that's not my responsibility. Really? No, it's not. Mm. No. Well, anyway, listen, we're going to have a joust coming up very shortly. Okay. Not just verbally, but with a proper man uh, who is, in fact, a knight of the Royal England Spectacular Jousting Team. Brilliant. This is Talk Sport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, the warm up with the two mics on Talk Sport. Yeah. Now, anyway, let's move over to another sport which is not dissimilar to golf, exactly. as much as it involves an awful <laughs> lot of personal kind of, um, uh, shall we say, chicanery. Well, I've never seen on golfer hitting the other with a. With the golf club, you know? Well, you don't play golf with the right people. Let's talk to Jeremy Richardson, who yeah. is, of course, a member of the Knights of Royal England. Jeremy, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, too. Now, I realise you've got a jousting competition to, uh, to get on with in a, probably about eight or nine minutes, so mm. we'll try not to keep <laughs> you. Uh, fascinating that jousting has become such a thing, I suppose. I mean, you'll probably tell me it's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, but, I mean, when we see people like uh, Victoria Pendleton suddenly taking it yeah. up, um, it's, it's a bit trendy. It is. It's um, it's it's fantastic. Of course, yeah, some of us have been doing it a very long time, and just been well, like lots of lots of sports people just doing the same old, same old over the years. But uh, uh, it has become very trendy. Our crowds have really have really rocketed for the last three or four years. Mm. So, um, it's been really nice. We probably do about um, sixty or seventy shows a year, or jousting tournaments a year, mm. and um, traveling to castles all over Britain, all over Europe. And right. uh, it's become very, very popular. Well, it sounds fantastic, Jeremy, but I've got to ask you this question. Isn't it incredibly dangerous? If you are on a horse thundering towards another man on a horse and you've both got lances of equal length, you're going to aim to knock your competitor off the horse. And if you hit him in the head with your lance, I mean, don't, don't serious injuries occur all the time? Uh, I've got a, got a short answer to that. Yes, uh, it does. I, I mean, there are lots of variables. You've got you've got horses which which have got a little bit of a mind of their own. Um, you, you know, you've got skills of the of the knight. You've got lots of movement. Yeah. Um, you know, lots of bouncing up and down and things like that. There's there's lots of things that can change. But you're basically you're actually not aim, not you're not aiming to hurt your opponent or to unseat him or to knock him out of the saddle. You are aiming to score points, which is basically hitting his shield coming the other way. I see. The thing is, if you get a direct hit and it gets into the centre of that shield and your lance locks in that position, because they just do sometimes, yeah. one or other of you is going straight out the back. And, yeah. Um, yeah, no matter how many times you practice it, falling off a horse, getting knocked off a horse at 30 miles an hour, it does hurt quite a lot. What happens if the lance hits the person instead of the shield? Yeah, that hurts too. Wow, and that I can think it does. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that can slide, you see. So that, can, that can hit the shield and have a good hard strike on the shield, yeah. but then it can slide upwards right into the helmet. Ooh, it can slide straight down into the groin, which can be rather painful. Mm. Uh, yeah, you bet. Yeah. Yeah, and again, if, you, if it's locked, so if you're, 
if you, you know, you're, you've got that split second where you are, you both hit each other mm. and you can't get out of the way. You're, you know, in that split second, you're going, whoa, something's going to go here. Yeah. <laughs> it's either him or me. Um, and I uh, sure. hope it's the other person. Mm. Now, without wishing to be indelicate, uh, Jeremy, is it something that you can make a living from doing or, or is it sort of more of a hobby? Um, it's more of a hobby. Right. I mean, yes, the shows are very professional. The tournaments are very professional. The costs are very high. So they sort of have to be run like a business, mm. if you like. Um, but, you know, you're, you're buying horses for you know, maybe 10, 15, 20,000 pounds each. Nice Spanish horses, uh, which are the same horses used for jousting in medieval times. Mm. You've got three tons. We've got three tons of props and equipment and PA systems and lorries and horse boxes and, and, and transport and, uh, and lots of props and things to put up. That's expensive. So, yeah, who funds all that? Um, it's funded by the venue. So, right, we right. would get paid to go and put on a jousting tournament at a at an event. Yes, which means that they've got to. You've then got to be good enough, and entertaining enough, and interesting enough um, to get people to come along. So, if mm-hmm. you go along there and just bore the pants off people, mm. you know, with something with talking about you know, what buttons you've got and whether yeah. this is right or that is right, people aren't going to come along. No. So you've got to have a little bit of a a little bit of a mix between mm. what it was like in medieval times and the horses and the and, and the the, uh, the costumes and so forth. A bit of a mix between that and making it fast moving and fun. And of course in medieval times, yeah. I say of course, but in medieval times it wouldn't have been a very sh- uh, uh, slick or quick show no. tournament, it would have been quite slow and pedantic, and uh, people would not put up with that nowadays. They uh, want to see boom, 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 yeah. action falls, bang, crashes, and everything else. That's great. Now, the best bit of it that I've seen from the historical films was always the banquet afterwards, OK? Uh, <laughs> wrestlers in the middle of the floor doing a bit of wrestling for entertainment, uh, vast um, uh, chunks of beef, uh, copious amounts of ale and wine, serving wenches who are are, you know, Steady. delivering food onto the table for you. You do do all this, do you, afterwards? Yes, we do. Oh, we, you do? Of course we do. That's all, <laughs> oh, you do. That's all part of it. Oh, that, <laughs> this is great. That, I'm going to take that, it off. You, I, I, I think you may not have the right physical attributes for it. I mean, I presume <laughs> the taller you are, the better if you're going to be a jouster, right? Uh, yes. Obviously, you need to be pretty fit. I yeah. mean, medieval, again, all the, the myths about knights in these medieval times, you know, a knight in full armour would mm. have been able to leap from the ground onto his horse without any problem at all. They were very, very, very fit, very strong people. So, you know, you need to be pretty strong and fit nowadays. Yeah. Um, so all that all that mead and ale and haunches of venison, um, yeah. you have to temper that a little bit. But, yeah, yeah we have... We have lots of banquets and things afterwards. Really that, good fun. That, that is absolutely fantastic. Tremendous. You're at Hever Castle today. Yeah. So, I mean, if anyone is near enough to Hever Castle right mm. now, can they uh, get down and see you? What time are you there till? Absolutely. We're, we, uh, the tournament starts at 2 o'clock today, and we're at Hever Castle from now until the end of August, every mm. Saturday and every Sunday, including mm. over, the, over the August Bank holiday. It'd be lovely to see people. And every time you have one of these, Jeremy, do you get a load of a gaggle of people afterwards come up to you and say, listen, I want to take this up. How do I get, in, how do I get started? And how would somebody get started? Well, we do a little bit. Uh, it's a bit like going to a West End production, you know, mm. and going and watching the theatre. How many people go up after that and say, I want to be an actor? Mm. Probably not huge numbers because they're a little bit in awe of, of what they've seen. So yeah. uh, we, get, we get some. We pick up normally one or two people a year. But it, there's a bit of commitment. You say it's a hobby. You say you're not really going to get paid. You may get expenses for mm. travelling places, but mm. you're not really going to get paid. And there's not enough business around to be able to do it on a regular basis so therefore you're doing it for the love of it as much as anything else it must be nice to have victoria pendleton on board yeah it must be yeah but i'm not sure if they actually joust together jeremy thank you very much, very much indeed, jeremy. Uh, and good luck with the afternoon's mm. jousting mm. uh great uh, great sport yeah. actually i've seen it a couple of times cause have you been to a the, show with your boys well, yeah well sometimes you go to sort of castle type things yeah, and right. fairs and things in the yeah. summer yeah. and some of these i might even have seen jeremy uh, yeah. inadvertently they're yeah. quite good uh, not bad at all how about this one from pete who mm. says uh, breaking news taxis mm seen dropping off Liam, <laughs> Joey, Lee and the beef oh, outside nice. Hatfield. That's nice, isn't it? They're all so, coming for you. So that's Liam Gallagher, right? Yeah. Joey Barton. That's right. Who, in, who, who got, got involved, involved in the debate last night. Yeah. beef side. Yeah, yeah, but he was very respectful. I mean, he wasn't calling me names or anything like that. Right. He was putting a point of view forward, so yeah. I appreciated him getting involved. Yeah. Uh, Lee Westwood and the beef. And the beef. My it's God. all happening. That's a formidable crowd. This is talk sport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, the warm-up with the two mics on Talk Sport. Good afternoon.
afternoon. I'm Mike Graham. He's Mike Parry. You're listening to the two mics on the warm-up right here on Talk Sport. It's been quite a cataclysmic weekend. Uh, it looks as though uh, the Open is warming up for a very, very hot afternoon, of course, up there at Royal Birkdale. We'll be talking uh, to Rupert Bell and to Bob Bupka uh, throughout the afternoon. 08717 Also coming up in this hour, uh, we will have the Porky Sermon, uh, where Porky will give you a bit of spiritual guidance uh, for your Sunday afternoon. Particularly useful uh, if you've been doing a bit of sinning. Uh, we are, of course, the two mics and uh, we are on TalkSport. So, uh, Jordan Spieth still yet to go out, of course. Um, 11 under, uh, going out at 2.30 with Matt yep. Kuchar. Uh, yep. Austin Connolly and Brooks Kopka mm. uh, uh, before him. Yep. Uh, Brandon Grace with that amazing 62 yesterday. Yep. Uh, but as, uh, as Bob said, it's unlikely mm. he's going to do that for uh, two yeah. days in a row. Exactly. Um, and it looks as though, I think, uh, um, our man Beef actually bogeyed the first hole. So, mm. he's plus one now. Yes. Uh, so, uh, that puts him about 12 shots off yeah, the lead. it does. It's very interesting what Bob said, was it? Bob Bubka before, yeah. that if the last two players who go out yes. reverse their fortunes, i.e. bogey from Spieth, mm. but uh, Birdie from his part, his playing partner. Who's that? Uh, the second guy out. Jordan Spieth. Yeah. What, the playing partner of Jordan yeah, yeah, Spieth? Yeah, uh, I yeah. told you that a minute ago, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did. Uh, yeah. Matt Kuchar. That's right. Yeah. Then, you know, you've, you've got a, a real... Well, if it suddenly goes 12 to 7, exactly. as opposed to 9 to 10... That's right. ...which would be great. Yes. Or 9 to... Yeah, 9 to 10 it would yeah, be if, yeah. uh, uh, if they went the other way. That's right. So you've got to hope that there's a little bit of wiggle room there, haven't yes, you? Yes, you have, yeah, because mm. you don't want it to be a parade, do you? You know, be like a Formula 1 uh, motor race in uh, Monaco ah. after Lewis Hamilton got right. off on pole. And I'm told that Kuchar was 66 to 1 uh, ahead of when, before the tournament started. Was he? Yeah. It's not a bad bet then each way, is it? Not if, a bad uh, bet at all. You've got it at if all. If you had yeah. that. Now, what was that you were telling me about the taxi from uh, from last night's uh, official event? Well, uh, you got incredibly generous with my money. Did I? As usual. Yeah. 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 Well, one so, of the things I was very proud to have done yes. uh, was that one of the ways of raising money, of course, was to buy the, or be the owner of one of the horses in yes. the race. Yes. Because I've never, I've never actually done this before. I'm sure to a lot of people mm. this might be a very familiar way of, uh, of yeah. raising money. Yes. But basically, you have a sort of preordained race, that's right, which is commentated on by yeah. somebody um, who's I don't know if it's watching an imaginary race or watching a real race, right? Um, but obviously, we don't know the outcome, no. And you buy numbered horses, rather you than, do, and you give them names and all that. Well, it's you, give fun. Them, you give them names on the program yes. on the race card, yes. but you can't give them names on the race itself on the because race it's itself, a fantasy it's, race, it's, it's a fantasy race, and it's also commentated on by number only, it has so to be number yeah. five yeah. coming up on the rails, that's right, you know, and yeah. all that kind of thing. So at the last race, mm. um, I was asked to come in and, and bid mm. to be uh, the owner of one of the horses, That's right? right? And I noticed that you were also bidding yes. to be the owner of one of the horses. Yes. And the bid was standing at something like £50. No, I think it was less. I think it was about 25 20 £25. Pounds. It suddenly yeah. went to 50 And then yeah. you, in your normal kind of slightly... Um, uh, erratic agra- erratic and, and sort of mm. show offy sort of way said a hundred pounds yeah, yeah. hundred pounds yeah. you know so as if that would sort of you mm. know somehow frighten everybody else away yeah. with your great largesse <laughs> oh, yeah. I then said well why don't we just make it 200 because I knew that you would be too vain to let me get it How and that ridiculous. you would definitely have to get this this mm. now because it would mm. mean everything to you mm. so you went 300 quid because I thought you were going to say yeah. 400 and I said uh, that's yours then <laughs> And you were just winding me up. So I was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And every, everybody else in the room knew that, but yeah. I knew that I was basically appealing to your lowest base common instinct yeah. of wanting to be the big man in the room. My horse got nowhere. And your horse but got nowhere, your sister's horse. My eldest sister bid for a horse and the betting stopped at a you know very sensible £25. Yes. She got it right. and won 250 quid because the horse won. And didn't get it back in the pot either. No. No, Which well, I think I think, I think I think I think she'll be making a, a substantial donation back Do you to think the charity. So? I think yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. But so, uh, what about this media being generous with your money? Then what's all well, that about? We got in the cab. Yeah. The guy turned up, and it was arranged for us by uh, Donna. The um, oh yes, our hostess. So it wasn't the same company that brought us there. No, it wasn't. Because com- well, can I not tell the other story? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I arrived at this hotel <laughs> that you very generously purchased for yes. me, the Holiday Inn. Sorry, the Premier Inn. That's right. Which is formerly a Brewers Fair. That's right. Um, and actually, to be fair, the room. Was all right. Mm-hmm. Um, however, um, the problem was you had ordered a cab mm. which kept not turning up, and the guy's ringing you saying, "I'm sitting outside." Sitting outside, it's pouring with rain. So it's a black right? uh, Nissan and or I something. Refused, it was a yeah. yeah black Ford, I think. I refused yeah. to go outside because mm. uh, it was it's raining because it was pouring. And down. you had a pint of beer in your hand, and I had a pint of beer mm. in my hand, mm. and I'm like, "Well, I'm you know when the guy shows up, I'll, I'll leave." Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it turned out you sent him to the wrong hotel. 
No, I didn't. He was sitting outside the Premier Inn in Epsom. He was. Yeah. And we were at the Premier Inn in Burheat. Yes. Uh, but the man, you know, was misdirected by somebody because uh-huh. I said to the guy behind the counter at the hotel, behind yeah. the uh, reception desk, yes. I said, did you hear me order the taxi? He said, yes. And I said, and did I say Premier... He said, you definitely did, sir, because yes. I always listen to make sure that people know it's the Premier mm. uh, Inn in Burheath. Yes. So the, but the guy goes... Well. Anyway, we then ring a company called... Platinum. Yes, because we were going to give them a, a sort of a hello, weren't you? We were. Yeah. And, and what happened was, um, the guy on the on the uh, switchboard, very kindly, I said, look, I explained the difficulty. We've got a charity event tonight. We've got to get there. We've got to open it. You know, we're hosting it. Uh, he said, well, he said, look, the only problem is I'm the only one here and uh, I'm in my running shorts and all this kind of stuff. You know, I'm not out on the road mm. today. Um, actually, it was his mate who said that. He said, I've got one guy here. He said he'd drive, he's not driving today, but he's in here doing some work. He can turn up, but he'll have a, uh, like a string vest on and a pair of shorts and flip-flops. Yeah. I said, that would be brilliant. And the gentleman turned up in a smashing car, the E-Class uh, Merc, and whipped us down to uh, the Wellhouse Inn. Um, very and, quickly. Yes, and for that we're very grateful. Thank you very much indeed, because yeah. we'd have been uh, stranded. We would have been so stranded. So coming back, right? Yeah. So Donnie gets us a car, so we go outside, and uh, you're full of large yes, obviously. Yes. And um, well, I'd had quite a good night. No- quite a good night. And I think it started taking to the shots. Even or though I didn't actually Jack win Daniels. any money. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I donated quite a bit to charity. Yeah. To well, no, no. I, I, I'd say you would. Anyway, we went on a journey which should normally have cost no more than fifteen pounds. Okay. Uh, but you decided we'd have a drink back at the hotel. Uh huh. So, uh, so. Oh yeah. So you asked the guy to wait. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was going to say. I mean, I don't remember telling you to pay the guy a bucket load of money. No, no. no hang on. Hang on. So. So, um, so it's going to be it's going to be fifteen pounds, right. and then as we got to the hotel, I said, uh, "Listen, mate, I said I'm just nipping and have a quick drink with my uh, pal here. Be yeah. ten minutes, yes. uh, an extra tenner, right. twenty five quid." Yeah. He was very happy, and right. then you grabbed money out of my hand and said, "Don't be so mean with this driver. He's good enough to wait for you." And you gave him twenty five really? pounds of my money and gave no, him the rest back. That doesn't sound like something I would do. Oh, you did, really? Oh, you did, yeah. Are yeah. you sure? Oh, yes. Because when I came out, you know, Are you 15 sure or... you didn't give him fifty? Quid? No, 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 no. When I came out fifteen or twenty minutes later, mm. the bloke thought I was uh, Rockefeller, All right. and was clearly looking for another bong when we got <laughs> uh, when we got home. Well, I mean, there's, on nothing, the basis wrong with, that he there's thought... nothing wrong with paying somebody for waiting around. No, no but I mean, because you were more than five minutes, by the way. I, I, did, I said that. I said it was about 15 or 20 yeah, minutes. But I told him I was going to be that. And he was very happy to wait for, yeah. for a tenner. But anyway, you know, the, the guy thought that a combination of having Rockefeller-type instincts yes. plus uh, intoxication... Mm. Plus the need to get home because it was late. Yeah, it wasn't that late, actually, was it? No, it wasn't. It was, about it was only about 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, you decided to spend my money, and so, you know, what can I do about well, it? Well, that was my revenge for you mm. putting me in the Premier Inn, because everybody, yeah. to a man and mm. woman, basically, mm. including members of your family, mm. said, oh, we were going to put you in a much nicer hotel. Yeah, but it was but further Porky away. insisted on you mm. staying in the, in the Premier Inn. Yeah, well, I thought it would be a good experience for you. Shocking. Um, now, um, we do have an obsession about bikes in, on this programme. Well, well, you do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And uh, coming up shortly, I'm going to How's tell you... How's the exercise you... bike coming along, by the way? Very well, thanks. So are you actually getting on it? I'm getting on it. And using it on a daily basis? On a daily basis. Really? Yes. Very yes. good. And, you know, people have commented recently that I seem to have lost a little bit of weight. Yeah. And I think that's down to my new fitness regime. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Is that mm. why you're now saying that you're actually going to spend less time in the pub as well? Yes, I think so, yes. That's quite yes, an extraordinary it's, turnaround. It's a new uh, direction in life, yeah, very I think, good. you know. You've well, I think a... everyone will be very pleased to hear it. Yes, good. Because nobody wants to see you shuffling off this mortal coil just yet. Well, I'm not shuffling off this mortal coil <laughs> just yet or any time soon, OK? All right. So let's get that idea out Paul says right this away. because this is relevant to what's mm. coming up next. Please ask Porky what type of sermon he is delivering because it must be illuminating in the first instance. Yes, it will be. And Paul is in Oxford, so yeah. you'll appreciate that. Yeah. Well, the way it works is basically uh, I read out mm. a passage from the good book. That's right. Uh, and you uh, then uh, interpret it for us. I do, indeed. And which we're going to do next on yes. TalkSport. Yes. TalkSport on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Better looking by far. Anyone fancy a game? TalkSport. A 
fair amount of sinning going on over the course of the last few days. Oh, so, you uh, bet. What a better way to cleanse mm. uh, everybody's uh, soul mm. uh, than by having a bit of a porky sermon? Yes. Uh, this is where we basically, uh, I read out a passage from the good book, which has been selected yep. uh, for us by the producers behind the glass, mm. uh, and I will then hand with, it over to you. With ecclesiastical advice. Of course, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. And I will hand it over to you uh, for interpretation Okay. once I've read it out. Now, sure. today's lesson, mm. uh, should it be known as that, it comes from Psalm 88, yeah. verses 15 to 18. Right. Uh, I know and well. it says I know this. Well. Yeah. From my youth I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your terrors and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbour. Darkness is my closest friend. Right, OK. It's quite dark, yeah, though. Yeah, it's it? quite dark. Quite right, yeah. deep as yeah, well. Yeah. Now, now care to uh, please yes. uh, interpret it for us? Yes, I, I definitely can. Now, this, I think, relates to the open golf, OK? Yes. And what I would say is, is that um, what happens is, at the start of the open golf, there are 100 and how many? 56? 156. Or, 100, very well remembered, yeah. yeah. Um, golfers who think that glory is around the corner, yeah, OK? Yeah, exactly. Now, they, they think back uh, to the days when, um, you know... In the last seven majors before the Open Golf, yeah. a new golfer who has not won a major before has won that competition. Yes. So they're looking at being the eighth, you yeah. see what I mean? Right. And what they say is, from my youth I've suffered and been close to death. What they say is, is that the despair of losing is impenetrable mm. to their soul. Yes. OK? Winning is, is the only mantra winning they is the only to mantra. follow, yeah. Yeah, that's right. If you're, if you're not a winner, you're nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to learn to be a winner, darling, and if you're not winning... Uh, you darling? Know, that, that's what uh, an old newspaper executive of mine used to say. Oh, right. Because it was very trendy ah. to come up from London oh, yeah. with a cigar in your mouth, you know, and... Oh, uh, and call everybody darling. That's right, well, yeah. Well, sort of theatrical. Yeah, that's right, and, and start barking out orders in yeah. the newsroom, you know, like the captain of a ship. And, yes. Yeah, got to be a winner, darling. Right. Yeah, they called each other darling, yeah, yes. the, the picture editor and the, and the uh, news editor, because yeah. they were trendy Fleet Street types okay. working in Manchester, ah, you know what I right. mean? Right, OK. Uh, but anyway, so, so the point is, I have borne your terrors. I'm in despair. Yes. Now, this will be the golfers who tonight go away from the open golf and think that their career's gone backwards, not forwards. Yes. Okay. Right. Those who have already made the cut have gone through this despair. Mm. But those who are left after the cut who yes. thought they could rally mm. and suddenly a beam of light would come over the fairway yes. and guide their ball mm. to where it needed to go. Mm. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. What that means is exactly what I've been saying for years. If you're not winning, it's because you're not trying hard yes. enough. They haven't been practising hard enough. Right. And so the wrath for not practising hard enough, for not getting your head around it, yeah. for not making yourself exclusively focused on winning... Has destroyed them. Has destroyed them. Yeah. And the terrors of that will destroy them further. Mm. All day long, they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. As you go from one hole to the next, bogey. Yeah. Par. Yeah. Bogey. Yeah. But no birdies arriving on, no. the, on the scene. Uh-huh. All day long, they surround me like a flood. I mean, golf is a day-long thing, isn't it? Well, it doesn't have to be. It is, though. But it tends to be. Yeah, look, if you know, if, if you were going for a, a day's golf, if yeah. we were going for a day's golf, yeah. suppose we decided to accept an invitation yes. to go into a pro-am or something right. like that, right? Yeah. You would arrive for breakfast. Yes. You would have the bacon rolls, yes. traditionally. You would have uh, some coffee and yeah. tea and perhaps a glass of Buck's Fizz yes. to see you on your way. Indeed. You would then play... There was a time when, when you would play in the morning and in the afternoon. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But you probably wouldn't. You'd probably no. get off at about 9.30, 10. Tennis, yeah. Right, so you'd be, you'd be winding up and coming back at about 2.30, yeah. 2, 2.30, 3 mm. o'clock. Yeah. Perfect time to settle down for a couple of beers. Yeah. D- dinner or, or supper would be served at about 5.30. Yes. It's a day-long thing. Sure. So all day long they surround me like a flood. What it means is there's no way of getting away from it, you know? Yeah. If you're wearing a um, baseball cap, if you're wearing golf shoes, yeah. if you're wearing golf slacks, mm. if you're, you know, have a caddy uh, who's following you around, yeah. it's an all-day um, experience. And it is, because, I mean, if you're thinking... And it completely engulfs you. Yes, because, I mean, if you're thinking about uh, Jordan Spieth yes. and Matt Kuchar going out at yes. 2.30... That's right. I mean, they'll have been on the practice ground all morning, That's probably, right. won't they? That's right. On Ab- the putting uh, green, absolutely. chipping, you know, absolutely. getting their heads right, That's right, having a spot of lunch. Absolutely. Mm. And you have taken from me friend and neighbour 
Darkness is my closest friend. Yeah. Remember the great line in the Simon and Garfunkel song? Hello, darkness, my old friend. Hello, yeah, darkness, my old yeah. friend. Yeah. Mm. Now, that is a direct lift from the Bible, obviously, yes. from the good book. Darkness is my closest friend. Yes. And if Paul Simon's listening and he didn't actually lift it from the Bible, then I wish to apologise for accusing you of... Um, what's the word when you steal somebody else's... Uh, uh, what? What's, what, you mean you steal somebody else's idea? Yeah, no, uh, somebody else's words. You know, it's uh, plagiarism. Plagiarism. So I'm not, a, I, I'm not accusing Paul Simon and have plagiarised no, the Bible I wouldn't under do any that. circumstances. No, that wouldn't be good. I'm, I'm saying that, you know, uh, darkness is my closest friend was the original quote from the Bible, and uh-huh. many people have referred yes. to darkness as my friend ever since. Uh, he, genius that he is, put yes. it into song. Okay? Indeed, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Right. So you've taken from me friend and neighbour, darkness is my closest friend. What that means is you simply cannot imagine the despair of coming off this course today um, with the worst record than you had before you went on the course, going backwards, will I ever hit the heights in golf? Will I ever achieve the riches and the fame that those at the top do? Will I ever get to the top? Will I be a top man? No. And that's because I believe I've blown my chances and darkness is my closest friend because not even mm. my closest relatives, my wife or yes. my children, can break through this darkness, this gloom, this despair that I feel now. For I feel that... In reality, the purpose of my life may have vanished today. Really? And that is the lesson yes. for the day. That yes. was the Porky Sermon. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. OK. Well, let's see whether yeah. anybody who's listening up in uh, uh, Birkdale, who hasn't yep. gone out yet, yep. might be able to take some of that to heart. hope so. I mean, what's your plan for the uh, watching of the golf this afternoon? Um, Do you have one? Yes, I do. I mean, I, I, as I say, I always love to see the winner coming up on the yes. uh, 18th. But if he's, if he's six clear, you know, with on, on the 15th or something like that, yeah. it's not going to be terribly exciting. I mean, I can't remember the last time there was a golf tournament that was that one-sided, to be honest. No, I can't. I really. mean, I'm sure that uh, it will mm. still remain down to the wire yep. as best you can. Yeah, you know? I suppose so. I yep. think that's what you've got to look forward to. But are, are you going to be going home to watch it? Or to oh, yes, many absolutely. Homes? No, no, just going to my home in Surrey, you know. And, uh, Stop Broken Belt. Yeah, Stop Broken Belt, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what I want to say to you was, mm. uh, you think I have an obsession with bikes, but I warned, I first warned about this some time ago. Yeah. Uh, Singapore-based company uh, was ordered this weekend to remove hundreds of pay-as-you-go uh, bicycles uh, dumped on urban streets. Uh, funny enough, we were talking about Singapore earlier. Yeah. Uh, amid fears that bike wars are breaking out in Britain. Oh, yes. So you this know, is Britain. I saw an interesting picture. Right. Which I don't know whether you saw, but I think it was on Twitter. It was a bike. Uh, it was a bike that was left basically in the middle of a pavement in what looked like a fairly leafy street. Yes. And there was a sign on the bike mm. that said, please take me somewhere. Yes, that's effectively. right. So yeah. it was basically, it wasn't like a Boris bike. No. But it was something similar. Uh, uh, the, but but it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't locked well, into anything. This is, People were just being invited to, to take it away. This is almost like an Uber system. Yeah. The Boris bikes are very expensive because you have to pay for the infrastructure of uh, parking them on those locked, you know, stanchions that they have and all that kind of yes. stuff. And you put a credit card in and all that. They, they don't have stanchions with this one. They just leave them lying around. You well, pick it was, up. This was just standing on a, on, a, yeah. on a pavement. And you can apparently only make it work if you've signed up to the app and all right. this kind of stuff, right? But what's happened is... Um, so what, you have to slide a card into it or something? Maybe. You have to slide a card into it. But um, for the first time, they found an O-bike, this is what they're called, OK, yes. uh, dumped on the DLR in London, right. really causing an accident with the really? train. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. so it was actually on the track. Or it was actually on the track. Right. It was between the two rails on the track, OK? Mm. So it says, um, Will Norman, who is London's walking and cycling commissioner said City Hall is furious at a company called O-Bike no. after its bikes were randomly strewn across the capital. Now, we are not London-centric on this um, on this. Well, we try station. hard not to be. Because everything we've told you that starts here in London eventually gets to people everywhere else, north-east, south-east, north-west. You know, Durham, I think, was the second city to introduce um, congestion charges, yes. £2 pounds and, uh-huh. and all this kind of stuff. Is that you right? Know? Yeah. OK. And when we talked about trams here, trams appeared in Manchester yeah. and all this kind of stuff. Right. So this will... Edinburgh. Edinburgh, that's right. This will hit you somewhere else. Mm. Uh, unlike traditional cycle hire firms, among which you have to call, uh, you have to say the Boris bikes, which are now actually called after a bank, Santander, Santander bikes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's the Spanish bike. Uh, Spanish yeah, that's uh, right. bank. O Bike does not use docking stations. It allows customers to leave its orange and grey bikes anywhere they choose once they finish their journey. Mm. Well, you would think that most people leave them propped up against a wall. Well, you would. Or lean against a lamppost. Yeah. These guys just get off them and let them fall just onto the pavement. The well, the one that I saw that was pictured, which yes. appeared to have a stand.
stand. You know how some of them you can have that fold down little that's right. bar. Oh, that's right. And Lift it, was, it up on. Yeah. yeah. And it was and it was sitting on one of those. Right. Okay. So it was so it was standing alone, if you like. Yeah. Not leaning against anything. Yes, I see. In the middle of the pavement. Right. Okay. It says uh, since the introduction earlier this month, the bikes have cluttered busy pavements, and some have been vandalised or left sticking out into busy roads. Yes. One was thrown onto the tracks of the Docklands Light Railway. Blimey. Uh, so uh, Mr. What's his name? Norman says, we've written to O-Bike to ask them to remove their bikes until they can prove they can provide a safe and high-quality service that won't cause danger. Mm. If they don't, we will. Yes. Um, the difficulty is, I suppose, people don't expect to get something for nothing. No. So if you see something that looks like something for nothing, you're immediately yes. suspicious of it, aren't you? Yes, that's right. You assume that it can't be for real. Yeah. And so you kind of walk past it and just go, well, yeah. this must be some kind of a stunt. That's right. Or somebody's filming me. That's right. Or something weird is going to happen. Somebody's yeah. going to jump out at me or something, you know? But amazingly, what seems to have happened here is that... This company uh, are accused of yeah. having no consultation with any council at all. Well, yeah, they've just, just starting up. They've just brought a load of mm. bikes into London right. and just started it up through social um, networks, yeah. social media. Well, it's a bit like what people complain about in terms of the traffic. Yeah. And I'm sure this is also the case in many other cities of, of Britain. Yes. That uh, there's something like thirty five to 40,000 more taxis driving around yeah, there are. the centre of London at any be. given time. Must be. Because of the, you know, the, uh, the, the outbreak of Uber, the outbreak of various other taxi companies. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot more cars just walk, just driving around, generally. That's, that's right. The, you're absolutely right. I mean, transport is going through a huge revolution. Mm. For instance, it says Yo Bike, a Chinese firm, launched a scheme in Bristol in May with about 800 bikes. Right. They shipped them into the city, and it now has about 20,000 registered users, mm. uh, including Marvin Rees, who is the Labour mayor. Right. He says the ease of it is great, but that was in consultation with Bristol. Yes. The, the ones that are coming into London are simply Nobody's just, bothered no, to tell anybody. No, that's How right. How bizarre. Yeah. How yeah. very strange. Yeah. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, the warm-up with the two mics on Talk Sport.